Hi, my name is Stephanie Giard and I'm the Marketing Director here at Geospatial Experts. Thanks for joining us today for this webinar on GeoJot Plus for trail inventories. The presentation is just meant to be an overview. It'll last about 15 minutes along with the demo and then there will be a short Q&A session. So please feel free to type in questions at any time during into the uh, question section of GoToWebinar. Tyler McGarity, our Technical Account Manager, will be running the demos and then leading the Q&A session. I'll be giving the introductory presentation, so let's go ahead and get started because we've only got 15 minutes. GeoJot Plus is a full solution that takes you from mobile field data collection all the way to reports and integration into your existing system. The GeoJot Plus app turns your staff and volunteers' mobile devices into photo-based geospatial data collection tools. Volunteers can upload data via the cloud or staff can transfer via USB port. And using the GeoJot Plus desktop application, you can create all the output you need to get data into your various systems and to create maps and reports. Since 2001, we here at Geospatial Experts have been the leader in photo-based GIS data collection, starting with our first product, GPS PhotoLink, and now the GeoJot Plus field data collection system. So here on the screen are just a few examples of thousands of Ge Geospatial Experts customers worldwide. Uh, many of you from National Park Service, Fish and Wildlife Service, and BLM have been here from the beginning and worked with us directly. But some of you may also have come to us through our reseller network that spans the globe. Our land management agencies manage hundreds of thousands of miles of trails. The current condition of the trails needs to be documented and they need to be maintained over time. That's a tall order. GeoJot Plus simplifies the process both in the field and back in the office. So GeoJot Plus is being used by uh, Department of the Interior agencies to document trail deficiencies, for work order creation, to create records of new assets found in the field, and for trail planning. So a few examples of how DOI agencies have been using it for trail planning and maintenance are uh, Rocky Mountain, Rocky, Mountain National Park has 355 miles of hiking trails ranging from flat lakeside strolls to steep mountain peak climbs with elevations from 7,500 to over 12,000 feet. And they're using the GeoJot Plus app to capture deficiencies and then use that data for work order creation. Golden Gate encompasses a wide range of trails from the boardwalks at Muir Woods which get thousands of visitors a day to the relatively new properties in the southern part of the county with a very, very primitive trail system. So hooking GeoJot up to a GeoXT, a Trimble GeoXT, trail planners can visually as well as geographically document the primitive trail system in San Mateo County so they can create interim trail, an interim trail plan for the area and move towards a master plan. Golden Gate is also planning to inventory all the trail assets like bridges and drains in that same area, getting the data into FMSS. Um, oh, so a couple other things about Golden Gate. So they also felt that GeoJot would be helpful for getting photos and data into Pepsi, their environmental compliance database, and to create the necessary deliverables um, such as PDF and MS, uh, PDF and MS Word reports. So I, I always stress this during all of these short 15-minute uh, presentations, but I, and I stress it a lot. So some of you who are listening to their third webinar are going to be tired of hearing it, but the GeoJot app is so easy to use. It's really what we focused on on building the GeoJot app, was making sure that not just the GIS tech could use it, but that anybody could go out in the field and figure it out. So you can give it to your staff, um, but also your temporary staff, your interns, even your volunteers definitely your volunteers and they can help you. And it allows you to quickly and accurately collect consistent data. And I mean, it's really a new age for trail inventories. Um, a lot of you are used to using equipment that um, need a master's degree to run. And with this, if, if someone can figure out how to take a selfie, they can figure out how to use GeoJot. You can train your staff and volunteers to use it in just minutes and then have usable data to feed into ArcGIS or to quickly create PDF reports or any other kind of output that you need. It will run on pretty much every device you have there out in the field. So iPhones, iPads, iPad minis, Android devices. Um, I know that some of you out there, we, you know, at Department of Interior have uh, the Garmin Monteras are kind of popular. We also, it'll run on people's personal Android or Apple devices. It'll run on Trimble units. You can hook it up externally. 
You can run it on your smartphone or tablet and then hook it up externally to a Trimble unit to get better accuracy. Uh, there are a lot of different options out there depending on what you need. And you can use all these devices whether they're cellularly enabled or not, and you can easily transfer licenses between units. So as I said, the app is super easy for anyone to use. And then back in the office, uh, that's where the heavy lifting is really done. And that's generally by a staff person who's at least familiar with GIS. First and foremost, um, what people need to understand is that the, the data that you're collecting with GeoJot is actually written into the EXIF header of the photo itself. And so the photo and the data can never be separated. And then also using the GeoJot Plus desktop application, staff can create you know, ArcGIS geodatabases and shapefiles, which I know is a common requirement. Also PDF reports, uh, you can get the data into NPS gallery, you can create Google Earth maps, uh, you can create a feed into FMSS or SAMS or another asset management system. So this is helpful whether you're planning a new trail, detailing trail deficiencies on an existing trail, or documenting work to be done uh, to, Im to improve a trail. Uh, it works really well for proof of performance to show uh, what has been done out there. So before going out, there, there are some important things to do. You need to define your workflow and run, run through it once before sending out teams. As I said earlier, GeoJot is really easy to use, but sometimes, um, Generally, if we, see, if we see issues occurring, it's because people didn't understand the workflow procedures that they were supposed to follow. So it's really important to check those before you send out a team to collect data. And you need to provide you know, really clear instructions, so particularly if volunteers are involved. Tyler will show you this in just a minute, but we have the ability to, uh, once you set up a phone, so that's all the settings. So we went through this before and I can never remember them. Um, so it's like your GPS settings, your accuracy settings, um, also where you want the data to go, if you want the data to be renamed. But all of these settings that you can do on the app, you can once they're set, you can create a config file and then you can share that. So you get that set up and you can share it with your whole team so that everybody has the exact same settings on their mobile devices and that ensures consistent data. Another way to ensure consistent data is by uh, doing the same thing with forms. So you can create a form either on the phones or back in the office is actually easier because there's more uh, there's more functionality in the desktop application to create those forms. But so you create that and you can get your forms out to everybody so that they're all um, collecting the exact same data. And then you also need to decide how you're going to transfer the data before you go out into the field. Uh, we understand that within uh, the Department of the Interior, there are some res uh, restrictions on how you're allowed to do things in, ter in terms of cloud data transfer. But we do have um, the, the options that we have for cloud data transfer are Google Drive and FTP. Then that's for our enterprise accounts. So that's uh, National Park Service has access to those. We also have email um, and Dropbox that are available to everyone. And like I said, DOI staff may or may not be able to use these, but one thing to consider when you're getting ready to go out into the field is that your volunteers probably can. And so that's something to consider that they might be able to do a lot of that data collection and then use cloud data transfer to get that data to you. All right, and with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to Tyler for the live demo. All right, thanks, Stephanie. Uh, my name is Tyler McGarity. I'm the technical account manager here at Geospatial Experts, and uh, we're going to give you a, uh, a little demo of uh, doing some trail maintenance work this time. Um, GeoJot's very flexible, so it can collect any kind of asset, whether you're doing a uh, trail inventory or whether you're going through to fix uh, problems or signs along a trail. Uh, very easy to customize the different functionality here. Uh, the example I'm going to show is uh, from the Cherry Park region uh, south of Denver that uh, got some damage after the floods in 2013. Uh, Romo, Rocky Mountain National Park, also heavily damaged in those floods, and uh, they were able to use GeoJot to do a lot of their trail maintenance up there as well and get pictures of uh, what needed to be repaired and bridges that need to be replaced. So here you can see the GeoJot app. This is running on uh, an Android device. Um, we would also run, of course, on iOS or Windows Mobile 6.x. Uh, you can see I have my form loaded trail survey. So when you launch Android, it goes directly into the camera app. Whatever form you have loaded, you can easily just uh, take a photo and go directly into the 
form part of it. Uh, this is one, like I said, that's mainly people going out to do a quick evaluation of the trail after a flood event so that they can figure out what kind of repairs need to be made. Uh, once that photo's been snapped, uh, it goes to the camera roll. You can see here on the camera roll, uh, you can easily go in there, it just popped up into Dropbox. This one's hooked up to Dropbox right now. Uh, in the camera roll, you can see the photos of the various uh, pieces of trail that were taken. You can take a look at them and see uh, the photo itself, uh, an overview map of, of where it's located, and uh, the form data, if any of that needs to be edited. We also have in the Android and iOS versions uh, an overview map that allows you to see all of the photos collected on a certain day. If I can stop fat finger in it, there we go. Uh, here you can see all of the photos along the trail here. Uh, shows you the direction that they were taken in. On any of these, you could go and look and say, oh, uh, where was that? And uh, it'll show you the photo. And maybe if you've transferred this to somebody else who's going out to actually do the work, then they can use our Navigate To feature, which you'll see uh, down there next to the plus and minus, uh, which can navigate them directly to those coordinates. Uh, Stephanie mentioned we support external units. So if you need a higher level of accuracy, with these mobile devices, uh, in, a, in a situation like this, uh, you know, best case scenario is about plus or minus 10 feet outside. Uh, if you feel like you need a higher accuracy level than that, there are several options that are very easy to connect up to GeoJot so that you can get the higher accuracy there. Uh, the device, once you have it set up for the size of pictures you want, the kind of cloud transfer you want, uh, you can set a required GPS accuracy. Uh, we support GPS averaging here on the Android device. You can set it to feet, meters. Uh, once you have all that stuff set, very easily you can here hit the button there and do share settings. And you can share that to a cloud folder or you can share it to an email address and easily send that to other people out in the field. If you're deploying coworkers or volunteers, uh, you may want to build a form ahead of time or, or set up your settings ahead of time and then have them use that information that you've already uh, created. This ensures data consistency. Everyone's using the same settings. Uh, same thing with forms. You can see uh, you can have as many or a few forms as you want. Uh, in this case, uh, on the trail survey form here, uh, you could easily email that to somebody else. If they came out, they have GeoJot. Uh, you could just say share and email it to them. When you create these forms, you can create them out in the field, um, but it's easier to create them in the desktop. And once you do that, uh, you can send them out to your field team via, easy, via email. Uh, to a whole list of people or if you are using cloud things you can drop them in a shared cloud folder and people can bring them in from there as well so once that data has been collected out in the field it comes back into uh, GeoJot core uh, here you can see this is the project manager in GeoJot core I'm going to go ahead and launch the trails project it's going to load the pictures that were taken out in the field here you can see them and uh, shows you here that they are all geotagged I can come through here and use my data editor tab to see uh, where they are on an overview map. And uh, from here, I can edit locations if they need to be, and also any of the data collected with it. So I can come through here and say, oh, uh, I may need to change something in here. Very easy for me to do. Or if perhaps the people, excuse me, if perhaps the people have gone out in the field and collected this data, but you need to add additional data, uh, you can come in here to the fields and, you know, I may want to say, uh, on all these fields, I need something that ties it into my existing system. So I'm going to add the trail ID and uh, I can put in a trail ID and uh, that will be saved with all of the uh, all of the pictures now. So that information can be used uh, in the output selection, which uh, I'll show you some of the outputs here in just a second. Uh, photo editor tab allows you to do uh, Standard photo editing, you can crop things, uh, you can change the colors around a little bit, you can highlight what needs to be highlighted uh, in different photos. Watermark tab allows you to uh, choose what you want watermarked on the photo or not watermarked on the photo. So you can change the color, you can change the information very easily to come in here and say, oh, I, I want the file name on the photo and maybe I want lat and long. Uh, and you can determine where those uh, items show up on the photo here through the uh, the little wizard up here on the top. Shared output settings allows us to push out uh, all of the settings that you have set up. 
Um, if you're working with a system like Maximo or FMSS, this is where you can put in a persistent URL. So if you have an existing trail ID that's set up on all those items, uh, you know, I may want to say that I'm going to uh, prepend the URL to a field. So I may be sending this all to uh, MPS uh, focus. And uh, in that case, what I want to send up there is going to be the, uh, the trail ID. So then all of these pictures, when they were, when they're processed, they can be sent up with a similar ID uh, and they'll all be associated to the same known trail. Uh, all of this is customizable. And once you have this stuff customized, you can save it as a template here in the project manager. This is something you can create and then uh, distribute to other people so they can use your same template. And it ensures that you have the same data coming through the same way every time. All you have to do in future times, instead of setting all this up, launch it, add, a, load the template, bring in your pictures, and you can do some QC, QA, create your output, and you're done. So it streamlines the whole process. Stephanie talked some about how easy it is on the app end. That's also very easy on the desktop end, although it does have a lot of power. And uh, that's why I won't get very deep into all of these settings, but we can create a lot of different outputs, uh, paper outputs, data outputs. Uh, we do shape files, geodatabases. We do Google Earth stuff. Uh, I'll show you an example here. We're an Esri partner, uh, so we have a toolbar that appears in ArcGIS. Uh, this is an overview of that trail. I can hover over a point, it'll pop up our picture along with information that I chose to uh, have associated with that picture. Similar in Google Earth uh, here, I've got long file names, but you can change the file names easily in uh, core so that it's not quite as busy looking there. And then I can hover over any of these uh, points and say, oh, let me see the photo, and this is the data that was collected with it. Uh, this is a good deliverable that you can give to people that don't have a, a GIS system or uh, to post on public sites. And then we create the paper report, several different kinds. Uh, the background maps, you can use your own background maps if you have MXD or MPK files or uh, maps published through REST service. Uh, this one comes from Google Earth uh, or Google, and we also have uh, ArcGIS Online maps available in the program. Uh, and then you get two overview maps, your picture and the data that was collected. So this is a good QAQC point where you can check on the information that was collected. And then finally, uh, this is a CSV file, uh, the flat table. We create a flat table, it goes into the, the DVF with the shape or the MDB file, uh, the geodatabase. But essentially this is all of the information that you chose. Uh, you can choose which fields you output in core uh, to send out. And then this information can be easily uh, integrated into your backend system. You can import this into uh, any kind of management software you're using. So updated information can be placed in here. And with the uh, persistent URL added, you can have updated uh, a link to where the updated photo location is so that the backend system can see those updated photos as well. Uh, this gives you a broad overview of the way that you can do trail management with GeoJot. Uh, it can get uh, a lot more uh, powerful and you can do a lot more different things with it. But uh, what I would encourage you is if you are interested in doing that kind of trail inventory, jump on it, give me a call. I can help get you set up with some of our existing templates and forms, and uh, we can talk about your specific usage scenario and figure out the best way for you guys to get out there and do trail inventories with GeoJot. With that, I'm going to hand it back to Stephanie. Thank you very much, sir. All right. So as Tyler was saying, you know, we don't want people to reinvent the wheel. We know we have a lot of folks out there who are doing the exact same thing, and we've already worked with people who have, who have already done this. So go ahead and contact us in those templates and those forms. We can get you at least a place to start from that'll be close to where you're trying to get um, rather than starting from scratch. So please do that. Uh, if you're with National Park Service, please contact Brian Deathorn, Chris Dietrich or Christy McDonald and get the serial number for GeoJot Plus. There are 100 licenses that are available to NPS staff, seasonal workers and volunteers. So um, go ahead and utilize that, get that information from them. If you are not part of MPS, but uh, maybe you have someone has a license in your office, go ahead and borrow it and try it out. And if you don't have any access to license, then go ahead and get onto our website and download a free trial. It works for two weeks, that's right, yeah, two weeks. And um, while you're signing up for that trial, it does ask you if you are working with one of our resellers. So if you're working with a reseller, such as Compass Tools, go ahead and specify it there when you sign up. 
Also, check out the general use cases for land management agencies on our website. We are, we've got some information up there, and we're constantly posting more. Um, we'll also get you a link to this recorded webinar so you can watch it again, particularly the live demo section. Then by all means, if you don't already have, uh, if you don't already own a license of GeoJot, go ahead and purchase it. Uh, we are trying to get a DOI-wide license, but we need some more users to justify that. And in the meantime, uh, it's only $296 per license GSA. And so, as we understand it, it's very easy for, for folks to purchase one to five licenses on a credit card. And we know that everybody out there is super busy. Field season, well, field season has already started for some people, but it's just getting fired up for others. And this is going to save you a lot of time out there in the field and then at least as much time uh, back in the office. So, you know, get on this and, and get your trail inventories done this year and get, you know, get um, work orders up to get your deficiencies taken care of. And last but not least, uh, as, as we said earlier, the, the buck stops with Tyler. So please contact him for the forms and templates and detailed workflow documents. And with that, oh, and if you're at MPS, then you can go ahead and contact Brian, Christy, or Chris. And with that, we're going to go ahead and get the Q&A session started.